what I consider to be football royalty is joining us in the trenches with Dave Lapham, brought to you by First Star Logistics. So you made a very, very wise decision to join us because Phil Sims talks football with us, and specifically the Cincinnati Bengals. In the last couple of football games of the season, the Kansas City Chiefs game, review and talk about that. The Cleveland Browns football game, the upcoming game, how that might turn out, and what he projects to be the case in the offseason here a little bit for the Cincinnati Bengals. We'll get into that, how he approached the offseason when he was a player. Good stuff from Phil Sims. You'll enjoy. You made a smart move because it's a big day in the trenches with Dave Lapham brought to you by First Star Logistics in our outstanding studios as always because we have the man, the legend, Bill <laughs> Sims. I'll tell you what, Pro Bowl quarterback, New York Giants Hall of Famer, broadcaster extraordinaire. You see him on CBS and all kinds of other venues. He is the man. He is Phil Sims. We really appreciate your time, sir. Hey, Dave, always good to be on you. I can't believe we went the whole year and didn't get together. We tried, but, uh, you know, certain things come up. It's amazing. Like CBS wants me to really work for my money. (laughs) I hear that, Coach. I hear that. You know, I'm like you. I get a little neurotic uh, at times. And uh, so I just, hell, I get up during the middle of the night. My wife goes, what are you doing? I said, I just thought of something. I got to write it down. And, I hear you. And I put it in my bathroom. So the next morning I go, Ooh, that's a good note. I've got it already done. <laughs> that's terrible. But it's oh, all good. That's, that's great. That's good stuff. All right. So give me your take, you know, on the Cincinnati Bengals. Obviously, there were very high expectations. Joe Burrow pulls his calf. I mean, you know, in training right. camp, second day of training camp, and 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 comes back to start the regular season, but he can't he can't even really move. I mean, he's in the shotgun and and they're so limited with what they do. And they opened up with the Cleveland Browns, ironically, and got smoked 24-3, to 3, and it wasn't even that close. Um, the Bengals had like 140 yards offense total in that, in that football game. And then, Joe, you know, he gets better, and they got, win five in a row, and then, boom, he's out again. And the expectations, uh, you know, dry up. You got, got to go to Kansas City and beat Kansas City to stay in the hunt for the playoffs. They had a good shot if they did and could beat Cleveland, like 92% chance making the playoffs, but that's all, all done. They're, uh, they're out. They're one of the teams that uh, is, is packing them and zipping them as such. What did you think when you took a look at that Bengals Kansas city chiefs game? What struck you first, Phil? Well, you know, Dave, let me go back to this. You're in training camp. Joe Burrow hurts his calf. Yep. And we know you and I were talking about it last night, how close the NFL season is. There's just so little room for error. And right away. So that happens. You go, that's going to cost them a couple games probably. So there you are. You start behind everything almost right away, which, you know, catching up is hard too because you can play really well, as you know, as the next player. And it goes – and you still can lose games yep. when you do your best uh, or play a game where you think you should win and somehow you lose it, which happens, you know, to every team every single year. But watching the Kansas City game, you know, we got about 10 games going on at once up there. Right. So I'm watching it and I go – is that Cincinnati's opening drive? And it was. And I wa- and I just went, oh, my gosh, the Kansas City Chiefs, you know, look, we talked about them a lot in the pregame and everything like that. So it was a great start. But, you know, the Chiefs were up against the two. And after their performance against the Raiders, you're getting them emotionally, physically, game planning, all that stuff was big for them. Yeah. And that's kind of what I saw, just a team that, Maybe had slight edge over the Bengals, but it's not big, that's for sure. Uh, and they they found a way to pull it out. Kansas City actually ran the ball. Isaiah Pacheco and that. So, you know, that kind of tells you that I think they kind of went back and saw the mistakes they were making in some of the games before that. And they were going to correct it by being more patient with the run game. And I don't think the Bengals handled it well as the game went along. Yeah, the Bengals decided they were going to try to run the ball and, and ran it 24 times in the first half, the most ever um, by right. Zach Taylor in a half of a football game. And it was working. Like you said, they wanted a 15-play drive on the opening drive. They had Patrick Mahomes a little frustrated, you know, sitting on the sideline. That's the best defense is to keep yeah. him off the football field. Uh, and, then, and then in the third quarter, the fourth and one, 
and it doesn't and, and it doesn't doesn't go in the Bengals' favor. And from that point forward, I mean, they ran uh, 19 snaps for 36 yards the rest of the game. They ran 15 in the fourth quarter for 11 yards. I mean, it just all the air came out of the balloon, and that that is a tough a tough thing. But you have to bounce back. I mean, it's it's it, it, it's it's hard. It's easier said than done, but you got to right. Well, you know, first off, tell me the score of the game when they went for it on fourth down. And what was the score then? Uh, at that point, it was a four-point game. Okay. You know, it's always – and I watch games. It was a six-point game at that point. It was a six-point six point. game at that point. Let me make sure. Yeah. Let me double-check that. Well, yeah. It's a, you know, I'm, yeah. My thought is just that, you know, I love taking points. Yep. And, and, and um, you, you know, so running the football – what does it do for offensive linemen? Cool. Just the attempts. You know, you get tired. I just can't imagine you. You can tell me more than I can. Backpedaling and trying to use your hands to stop a 320-pound pass rushing pull. No doubt. Uh, so, you know, and, and I I actually saw corrections, Dave, with the, with the Kansas City Chiefs. The fact that they were a little more patient with the run and gave their tackles a break. And Patrick Mahomes – you know, unfortunately for Cincinnati, played a little more with patience and decision making. It still wasn't up to his standards, but it was kind of good enough to keep him in position where they didn't have to just let it go. And the pass rush of Cincy was just going to dominate the game. So, you know, that's what happens when you get in those situations. And, you know, I, the Bengals, they're a passing football team. Can they line up and just overpower the other team when they need to in a moment like that? I think that would be the big question. Yeah. So it was it was four, <clears throat> fourth and one at the six yard line, 17, yeah, 17 to 13 football game at that point. And and the Kansas City Chiefs, Spags does a great job. He runs a goal line package at the six yard line. He brings it, brings it out deeper. Yeah. And he and he uh basically has his defensive lineman out charge on both sides. And, and filled the middle linebacker and hadn't shown any of that stuff at the six, you know, so it blew the play up. I mean, it was a two or three yard loss on the play. And it was like, Oh man, that was just, that was a killer. Like you said, take the points, Phil. I, I, I might be old school, but my first head coach was Paul Brown. And that, when you said, take the points, that was echoed in my ear. Paul Brown would always say, take the points. <laughs> I there's, just, still, they, there's still a lot to do that. Uh, not as many as we think, and I understand it, but you know, we're talking about the Kansas city chiefs too. Yeah. Just mentally uh, for the offense and the coaches being down, uh, you know, a touch, you have to score a touchdown to win or kick a field goal to win. That is a huge difference. Yeah. Uh, what you know, and I know, and two Kansas city, with Steve Spagnuolo's defensive coordinator, I don't trust nothing. And when it comes to the, you know what he's going to do. He's going to, everybody's going to be up there. He's daring you to throw the football. Yeah. And of course, you said it too. They showed you a defense that you hadn't seen much from from them during the year. Which, man, he's got a big bag of tricks, Steve Spagnola. And um, you know, I'll give them credit. It's a good job. But we're talking about some really big, good defensive linemen over there. Speed at linebacker, like. Like you said, they parted the way for them to come in and make the tackle, yep. and those guys can they can fly. They they definitely have that um, have that in their bag as far as you know play calls. So I'm I'm interested in your take on Jake Browning, Phil. I mean you you're a great quarterback. I mean absolutely phenomenal. Jake Browning uh, has got a three and three record now as a starter, and uh, and and Spagnolo came up to Jake Browning after the game. And congratulate him and said, you know, yeah. son, you're you're playing some great football now. You know, oh, uh, yeah. keep keep it up. And um, Chris Jones did the same thing. Like, man, wow. keep keep playing the way you're playing. So when you get opposing coaches and coordinators and players doing that to you, like I'm sure that happened to you after in your career uh, during during the football season. How big is that? How big of a boost is that for a quarterback? It validates everything you want in your mind. And, uh, it, of course, it, I think it puts you at ease, makes you feel better, of course. I think Jake Browning, what he did was really well. You know, uh, people, oh, well, you know, as soon as they lose, well, they didn't have Joe Burrow. Well, Jake Browning, you know, he, he, did, he did an awesome job. I was really happy for him. I remember standing on the field last year before the game, uh, in the championship game, and stood right behind him and Joe Burrow and watched him throw. And I said, damn, this Jake Browning can throw. Mm -hmm. You know, I was kind of caught off guard. Mm -hmm. and, 
I forgot what coach was standing next to me. He goes, yeah, this is every day. And, um, huh. but what he did is he validated himself for the Bengals. And if it had fell apart, they would have gone out and got a new, another quarterback to back up Joe Burrow next year, but also down the line somewhere, you know, maybe he can make more money. Will a starting job ever open up for him? I don't know. I mean, yeah. it won't this coming year or the it's, it's, that's tough to say, but he did a, he did a tremendous job, controlled the, controlled the football really well, played tough as hell. And I love what he said after the Jacksonville game in the interview that he just learned to really be calm, never get too excited. And he said a few things that were really cool. And then he says, and I learned that from Joe Burrow. And, and I just sit there and myself sitting there watching the game started thinking, Oh man, it's so true. Just, be in this zone all the time and just not show emotion and play that way is a great thing for court. You don't even hear the crowd. You're so into it. And when you can do that and when it happens that way, you know, you're on the right track. Bill, you amaze me, man, because you're, you're pulling something out of reading material that you did with Jake Brown and you do that for all 32 teams. How do you remember all that stuff, man? You've got an unbelievable memory, Phil Sims. You're a oh. talented dude, bro. I'm telling you. Dave, I got to write it down five times. Like I'm in grade school still. Okay. I read, what did I write about the chiefs the other day? God, I know it was good. Let me go look again. Holy Christ. It's so, why could I forget that? I mean, so it, but that's the fun part, you know, as I'm, I'm watching Pittsburgh's offense right now. Are you? And I'm writing notes that, you know, I think that are different. Yeah. And of course I'm writing a little bit about Mason Rudolph and I got to give him tremendous credit too, not to get off on this tangent about him, but he's patient. He gets through his reads fast. He doesn't have a, what I would say, he has an average NFL arm, mm -hmm. but he's accurate. And and he, the other thing, he's a big dude. And when they're all around him, he does not flinch. He still makes the throws. Really very impressive. But, uh, you know, so I try to look at it a little different and judge, especially quarterbacks. Dave, I said this to you many times for teams, coaches, and players, try to tell the truth because the fans, what do they know, what they read and what they hear? It's true. So, it's very true. Yeah. So uh, Browning, once again, in the Kansas City game, um, he um, he was getting out of pocket, creating, extending. And yes. after the game, um, Spagnolo said, you know, we went to a spy. It was like, okay, he, he's Mahomesing us. He's doing what Patrick <laughs> Mahomes does to people, you know, running yeah. around, extending, creating. And Spagnolo said, yeah, we, we employed the spy. And, and Browning and his presser said the same thing. He said, yeah, they went to a spy and – you know, he changed up some coverages. And so he was he was running around. He gained like 30 wow. odd yards in the first half. Ran it one time in the second half because of the spy action. And uh, so Spags, you know, he makes an, another great adjustment there. But he shocked me with his running ability. Yeah. You know, yeah. he really did call me. You know, I was like, wow, he runs a lot better than I expected. Yeah. And uh, so that's and, – and I hate to say all that now, but now that's expected from every quarterback. You don't have to – we're not going to run the zone read and you're going to keep it and do all – but when the, the coverage is there and it splits wide open, you got to be able to take off and get 5, 10, 15 yards. And Jake Browning showed that he can do that. So great compliment. Chris Jones coming up and talking yeah. to a quarterback after the game. Yeah. That's – man, that would make my day when guys like that come up and talk to you. You know you're out there doing the right thing when they say it. So I hear that. That's cool. I hear that. All right, let's move on to Cleveland. Cleveland uh, is the fifth seed. No matter what right. happens in this football game, it can improve and it can't get worse. So right. they're talking about, you know, resting a lot of people, obviously. And and if they do play somebody, it's a series of two and out they come, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, Jeff Driscoll is is uh, projected to be the, the quarterback in this football game. He played with the Bengals for a while. He's yeah. been uh, a few teams in the National Football League. Yeah, he's been around. He's, yeah. he's one of those guys you got to check where he is every week. <laughs> he can be on a different team. And he's got some talent, you know. He's, yeah. he's a good athlete. Uh, I think he came out of Florida, right? It's been a while now. Yep, you're right. You're yeah, he came right. out of Florida. You know, good arm. Not what I would call, um, I would say, an average passer, uh, but can shock you with maybe every once in a while with his, an explosive throw or whatever. But I don't look at him like I would Jake Browning now. Jake Browning's smooth. He's a passer, uh -huh. and he can be a thrower, too. You know, when you need to step on the gas, can you do it? And, um, you know, Jake Browning, um, Driscoll, I mean, Jeff Driscoll, he's a little different. He's backwards from all that. Yep. You know, he's a power thrower, who a passer, or thrower, I should say, and not a great passer. So, hey, 
it'll be a week to do well because they say the Brown the Browns are saying we might play a few people here and there. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Whoever they can take out, I think they'll take out. Because they got some guys that are beat up. Yeah. They got injuries. And look, they're looking forward to the playoff game. I, I I'd be shocked if the Bengals don't play really well. Do you think Stefanski uh gets coach of yes. the year? It's his fifth quarterback. Do you think he gets coach of the year? I do. I do. And you know, I, I beat up on Jeff uh on Kevin Stefanski a little bit over the years. Yeah. And, you know, when these guys prove me wrong, I feel bad, but I admit it. I mean, Jared Goff, he smacked me in the face. <laughs> Jordan Love, you know, I didn't like him coming out in the draft. I worried about him, and he's he's done the same thing. He's playing really well. He is. But Kevin Stefanski, to me, it's the perfect NFL offense. They can line up and run the ball when all their guys were healthy big time. Mm-hmm. They got a good play action game. They move the pocket to throw. They throw a ton of screens. They're yep. really good at it. Yep. But maybe the most important thing, Dave, to me, they get Kevin Stefanski gets somebody open deep four to five times a game. It's 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 amazing. And they said, Oh, we want to get the ball down the field in preseason. I go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, I'll wait. But he was right. Right from almost the first game out, when Deshaun was in there, whoever was in there, he was finding ways to get receivers deep down the field for those big explosive plays. And the last thing is Joe Flacco loves it, and he's taking advantage of it, that's for sure. All right, so the thing I, – I, I cannot believe this with the Cleveland Browns. 35 giveaways, most in the NFL. 21 right. interceptions, most in the NFL. They've had 14 – Fourth down failures. They've gone for it 31 times and only made 17. Stefanski is unbelievably <laughs> aggressive. They're minus eight in the turnover ratio. They've had 49 drives that have have ended without a kick. No punt, no point after, no field goal. That's in 16 <laughs> games. That's three possessions a game they've given away. They should be five and eleven, not eleven and five. How the hell are they doing it? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. Well, um, you, you know, I think the first thing is their defense can bail them out of a lot of troubles. True. Especially if it was really healthy. Yep. That's number one. But the explosive plays and all that we talk about is, is you know, I think bails them out too. And Joe Flacco, you know, he's he's been really good. But as my son said, and I kind of copied him because I know it's true, he goes, hey, Joe, when we dial up a big pass play down the field, doesn't mean you have to throw it every time. You know, <laughs> it's so true. If it's a deep throw, he's going to throw it. Yeah. And the fact that they turn it over, it's usually better than a damn punt. Uh, so, yeah, those right. numbers, I looked at them, I think, on Monday. I was like, oh, my gosh, hard to believe yeah. what they've done with injuries and all those situations you said they've got it done. But it tells you about their players, too. They can make big plays. Stefanski is one of those coaches. Damn it, he hadn't seen a fourth down that he doesn't like. No doubt. Uh, no doubt. He's just he's very aggressive. And you know, I never thought of him in that way when he was coaching, you know, up in Minnesota. And he, I, th- I thought he was conservative. And he has proven I'm sure a lot of people are talking in their ear too, right? Dave, you know, they get the analytics and they got a probably a whole damn room full up there in the top looking at the game telling you what to do. Right. I, right. So I I'm sure that has a little to do with it, but he doesn't seem to flinch on the sidelines when it comes to making these fourth down calls. You talked about the defense of the Cleveland Browns. Number one in total first downs allowed. Number one in third down conversion percentage. Number one in yards allowed on uh, first down plays. Number one on fourth down stops uh, percentage-wise. Number one in total net yards. Number one in yards per play. Number one in passing yards, yards allowed per game. Wow. I mean, it's like, whoa. It, it, wow. it, it's unbelievable. Does Jim Schwartz get assistant coach of the year? Uh, you know, I haven't really thought about that, but I brought up the top of my head. Why not? Yeah. I mean, those numbers are unbelievable. Yes, they do have it at all levels. There's no doubt. I think it's the best secondary when healthy in the NFL. And I don't think – I couldn't even tell you who's number two. Yeah. I mean, they can cover, and they're not afraid to play man-to-man, and it, they can blitz. And, of course, they got one of the best pass rushers in the NFL, too, which, you know, when you can hit the hit the opposing quarterback, that's always a big deal. Yep. And Miles um, Garrett's been fighting it, too. You know, to, it's amazing. The NFL, maybe, I'm going to not to get off target here, but it seems like injuries have been more of a factor in a, a part of the game this year than ever before. I just, it, if you can... 
have somewhat the semblance of your starting offense and defense here late in the year, then you're ahead of the curve. It just seems like a lot of teams got a lot of backups playing and trying to hang in there. So, yeah, you're you're right about that. Cleveland's one of them. Yeah, I mean, what do you think about uh, the two Bengals that, uh, that that made the the Pro Bowl? You got Trey Hendrickson with 17 sacks, tied with T.J. Watt uh, going in, into the last week of the season. Then Jamar Chase, right. uh, he's got 96 catches. I'm, I'm sure he's going to try to get those that those hundred catches. I, I think that's an an important thing for him individually. He does want to play for his teammates as well. What do you think of those two guys? I think Trey Hendrickson's a uh, star that nobody talks about. Yep. Uh, he just goes unnoticed and down there. He really does. And uh, I watch him, I think, this past week. Did, he had a sack this past week, right? He did, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah and I just look at and he kind of looks I – mean, just me, when I see him now, I go, man, he looks bigger than he was in the past years. And, you know, he's – He's all he's talented with the attitude and all out effort. Yep. I mean, that's him. And that's and I kind of like that he's always a little chippy too. Yeah. You know, he you know, he's always got to get the last shove in, is and that, you know, whatever. Uh so him and Logan Wilson are great company. They're in a good pair there. Yeah. But also J- Jamar Chase, uh, look, everybody in the NFL, if they're gonna name top receivers, his name comes out of their mouth really fast. Yeah. So good for him. I'm glad they both deserve it for sure. And uh, we'll see how it goes. My big question is to you, T. Higgins. Yeah. What's what's going to go on? You know, he's had some great moments this year. He has. And I'll never forget last year at the, at the championship game. He was right. They were coming down right in front of where we were near the end zone. He caught that high pass for the touch. Yeah. And I just turned and went, oh, my God. You got to be on the field to appreciate the size, the speed, and the talent. And Boomer goes, "He's our number one receiver." <laughs> <laughs> no, I said, "Yeah, Boomer, I I agree. I think now I've just never got a chance to really just watch him on the field, and it's a it's it's a, these receivers and some of these talent guys on the field now are just amazing. It, and he's one of them. Yeah, he is. I mean, and and the thing about Jamar that's so special too is physically he's got all these gifts, but mentally they can line him up anywhere, anywhere in the formation, split right. and flank or slot. They can motion him, you know, into anywhere. And he knows every route, every assignment. He can run every route. I mean, he is a gifted guy because of his his mind as well as his body. Man, it's crazy. Well, I think you know, Dave. You know too. If you don't have the mind, you can never take advantage of your talent. And uh, that's him, you know, all these guys. You show me a great player in the NFL, and I, they got talent, but they also have the attitude and the mind to put it all together and apply it on the field. I mean, during offseason with the Giants, we'd be out there working out all offseason. I'd go, man, I got two receivers. I tell you, I think they're going to be all pro. They're so good. And, hell, they never caught a pass even in preseason Yeah, because they couldn't put the talent with their mind and brain or whatever, and they couldn't put it on the field. They could do it in practice and throwing the ball around, having fun, but they couldn't do it when it counted. And that's, of course, that's not Jamar Chase. He 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 has it all, and it, it's fun to watch. So I guess uh, we'll get you out of here with this, Phil. What do you think in this football game? Cincinnati Bengals at home at Paycor Stadium against the Cleveland Browns. The Browns looks like they're going to be resting a lot of people. Is this a trap? Do you think the Bengals pull it off? What do you think? Oh, I think the Bengals win the game. I, I just think they will. I think they have uh, a lot of reasons to play hard, all yep. their you know, the starters, but the quarterback's going to be motivated. The coach has got to be motivated. And, you know, two people always – I did this with Bill Parcells, probably told you the story. You know, he coached the Jets. They're one and seven, and he was just an animal for the rest of the year, and they finished eight and eight. And I said, Bill, you know, you put so much into it, and – and, and, you know, I don't, I don't know if I quite understand. He goes, hey, Sims, you know, him. He goes, that record goes on my tombstone, okay? And I go, <laughs> got it. <laughs> so that's it. That wins and losses are what we talk about with head coaches. So I'm sure that's it. With Zach, I, I'm sure that's in his mind too. They want to win the game no matter what. But it's it's how you're judged and it counts. And it goes on your record. So I like the Bengals. I, I like them. Not only do I like them, I kind of like them easily too. I really think they'll – I think they'll be motivated. 
and uh, a lot of energy. And I just don't see that in Cleveland just because all they can do is probably think about next week. Right, right. So. Great points as always, you know, nobody, uh, I love talking football with Phil Sims. I could do it all day long. You are the man, sir. Appreciate your time. All right, Dave, always a pleasure. Damn, you've been lifting weights, man. You, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're a workout guy. Look at you. Look at, look at the, look at the deltoids. Look at the pectoral. Oh, the majors and minors. Phil Sims hey. is getting after it, man. Getting after I go it. on diets down, still gain weight. Uh, so <laughs> it's, it's, it's that time of life, and it doesn't go where I want it to go. So, yeah, oh. and, and it won't go away. I'm telling you, man. Oh, oh no, it's, it's, it's easy it's, to it's pick up and, and very difficult to get rid of, man. Yeah, it is. Oh, Lordy. It's all good. Dave, always good talking to you. And, um, you know, I'm, I, of course, with Boomer on our set, we follow the Bengals and I'll be sitting on one and he's on the other game and he'll go, Oh, who is I go, no, no. Oh, the damn they fumbled the ball. I go, Oh Christ, okay. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, so he's a which I do like. He's a great fan of the Bengals and follows them close and we have a lot of fun with it too. So but it's all great. It's great to be on with you. Thank you. You're awesome, Phil. Thank you. Dave Lapham here, and every day I am grateful for my experience to have played professional football. As a player, I realize self-motivation leadership and appreciating your teammates are key at first star logistics you can use those same attributes to create the life you want for you and your family build your future by working hard like i did you'll see results both on and off the field call first star logistics today and be part of our winning team